So our job then is to start as philosophers, then initiates, then masters, you know, knowledge, experience, wisdom, mm -hmm. mind, body, mm. soul, thinking, the doing, the being, learning with your head, applying with your hands, knowing it by heart. Like there was a researcher from Yale University in the 1940s that was very, very passionate and interested in studying the electromagnetic fields around living organisms. Now, in the 1940s, nobody was doing that. He, right. was, he, was, just, he was just a different guy. So he started off studying eggs. And when he was studying eggs, chick eggs, you know, different types of bird eggs, salamander eggs, lizard eggs, reptiles, amphibians, 100% yeah. of the time, he always saw the positive charge where the head was and the negative charge where the tail was. Now, if you have positive charge mm -hmm. on one end and negative charge on the other end, you have a magnet. Mm -hmm. So that magnetic field is actually in the shape of the egg, exactly. Okay. So yeah. he starts measuring, he starts quantitatively analyzing all these eggs, and then he goes right to women huh. with the propensity for uterine cancer. And he starts measuring their electromagnetic field around their body as well as around the organ. And he starts noticing the same exact patterns for uterine cancer. And every single woman that had a pattern in the field that he measured had a pattern in the physical body of, of cancer. So, but there was a certain percentage though that had some in the field but didn't have the cancer in the body yet. But they ultimately developed the cancer. Wow. So he was looking at matter thinking there's a glow of, you know, with, right. his, with, his, with his measurements, matter's emitting a field. Yeah, but it's not the know. case. It's actually the field that's creating matter. So change the field and you change matter. There's only two components according to the research that shows how to change the field. Here's an example. They did an experiment where they took a, people, a group of people that were great uh, healers. And um, they took these vials of DNA and set them out in front of these people. And they said, now listen, this is a mindful function. With all of your intention, we want you to see this DNA wind or unwind in your mind. Just keep seeing it wind or unwind, wind or unwind. Okay. So they did it over and over again, over and over again. They checked the DNA. Guess what happened? Nothing. Intention did nothing to change the DNA. Okay. So then they said, okay, open your heart create an elevated emotion and just feel gratitude and radiate that feeling of care and love into the field and let's see if that changes the DNA. They elevate their emotional state, they do it for a period of time, they check the DNA, guess what happens? Nothing. But when they say to the people, we, what, what I want you to do is see the DNA unwind in tension, one frequency, the electrical charge in the quantum field, and feel the emotions you would feel as if it already unwound, elevated emotion, magnetic field in the, in the quantum, over 20% of the DNA unwound at a remote location. So thought being the electrical charge in the quantum field, feelings being the magnetic charge, how you think and how you feel broadcasts a field. So now, not just any type of field is gonna do that, it's gotta be coherent. So we practice creating brain coherence. We actually measure it. We practice creating heart coherence. Why? Because once energy moves right up in here and you can change resentment or frustration or impatience to joy, to freedom, to gratitude, and we're measuring to see if you're doing it. So now when the heart starts regulating, it starts beating like a drum and it starts to produce a measurable magnetic field. It's up to three meters wide. Now, that energy is a frequency, and that frequency can carry information, and that information is your thought, is your intent. In other words, the elevated emotional gratitude can carry the thought of your health. The emotion of suffering cannot carry the thought of your health. It carries right. a different set of thoughts. <laughs> so you can think positively all you want, and if you're feeling miserable, right. your mind and body are in opposition. So we teach people how to put these two coherent signatures together. The thought sending the signal out, the feeling drawing the event back. But the more coherent, the more organized the signal, the more connection you have to the field. So, so coherence is a synchronization. Mm -hmm. As an example, when people are under the gun of the fight or flight nervous system, they're living by the hormones of stress, the arousal 
of those chemicals drives the brain into a faster brain frequency called high beta brain waves. Okay. In high beta, the arousal, you're in survival. What you're trying to do now is control and predict everything in your life. Right. And so you start thinking about your boss, your coworker, your, your boyfriend, you start thinking about groceries, you start thinking about where you have to go, all the things you have to do, finances. And every one of those things, elements, people, places, has a neurological network in your brain. So as you shift your attention very quickly, you're activating those circuits and like a lightning storm, in the clouds, your brain starts firing very incoherently. And when your brain's incoherent, mm. you're incoherent. At the same time, you're stepping on the gas, your heart's racing because yeah. of survival, you're stepping on the brake, so you can't <laughs> fight. And so now the heart starts beating incoherently. So how do you reverse that? So we teach people how to create more order in their brain. And there's a formula that we practice, and when they do it right, the brain starts getting very organized. Those different compartments that were subdivided start to synchronize. So now, all of a sudden, those different communities of neurons that were out of sync start synchronizing, and what syncs in the brain links in the brain. And all of a sudden, you start seeing more and more neurons start dancing to the yeah. same rhythm. They start synchronizing like a symphony. And when, when that starts to happen, when they start getting more organized, think about coherence like a group of people clapping in an audience, say there's a thousand people and you say normal coherence for an average human being would be every fifth person in the audience clapping at the same time. Super coherence, what we're measuring, imagine a hundred billion neurons same all time. synchronized. So mm. now a thousand people all clapping at the same time, not only is it creating more order, but energy. it's creating more energy. Yeah. So now waves start stacking up oh. on top of each other and all of a sudden you start getting more energy in the brain, more synchronization, and all the areas that were no longer in balance start to come together. And the side effect of that is now the person starts feeling more whole. So I use the word energy centers because if you say chakras, some people will have the wrong understanding of them. These different energy centers of the body are centers of information. They have their own frequency, they have their own energy, they have their own little individual brains, mm. believe it or not, they have their own hormones, their own chemicals. So those different circuit boards are under the control of the autonomic nervous system. Now, stress creates imbalance in the autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is switched on for one reason, emergency for preservation. So then you are mobilizing enormous energy to preserve the body, and it should be a short-term thing. The other nervous system, the parasympathetic, is for growth and repair, right? So some people spend the majority of their time living in that high frequency of, of, of stress. Um, so then teaching people then how to make a move from that sympathetic system into the parasympathetic system means they have to practice on a daily basis certain fundamental principles. When you're in stress, when you're in survival, you narrow your focus on a cause. That's called a, what's called a convergent focus. And when the autonomic nervous system moves out of balance, the brain moves out of balance, right? We narrow our focus on the cause, and it causes each one of these different energy centers to move into incoherence as well. And those little, little individual brains start moving into incoherence and send an incoherent message to the cells and tissues and organs. Hormones then become down-regulated, and the body starts moving out of balance. So when we bless the energy centers, or we pro reprogram these energy centers, two things has to happen. They have to be able to slow their brain waves down. They have to get out of that high beta state, and the way we do it is to go from a narrow focus to a broad focus. When you open your focus, when you open your awareness, mm -hmm. that's what creates coherence in the brain, because mm -hmm. you're going against that habit of putting your attention on matter. So there's a convergent focus, which is focusing on matter, and then there's a divergent focus, which is focusing on energy. Well, reality is both particle and wave, mm -hmm. matter and energy. So if a person can slow their brain waves down from beta brain waves to alpha brain waves, now they're starting to fall out of their thinking brain mm -hmm. right into the home of the autonomic nervous system. Okay. If the person can't change their brain waves, okay. it'll never work because okay. they're in their neocortex and their thinking mind, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that has to happen. The second thing that has to happen is that they have to practice both a convergent focus and a divergent focus. First you focus on that energy center, that's particle, and then you focus on the space around it, that's okay. wave. And so when you open your awareness 
and you're able to do that and you're in your autonomic nervous system, you can put an intention there, oh. which will create more balance in estrogen, more balance in uh, your, your sexual organs. You move to your second center, you put your attention there. That's your, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So now you're beginning to direct energy yeah. into that center. But now you become aware of the space around it. Why? To create coherence in that little brain. Send the coherent message to the cells and tissues. Mm. Go to your third center right in the pit of your gut. Well, there's a huge celiac plexus there, a solar plexus, a lot of connections in there. And you tune in to that energy. Then you right. put your attention in your heart. It has its own individual brain. Yeah. And when you make energy here, when energy finally arrives here, guess where it goes automatically? Straight up, we've measured it. Mm. So now once you start opening <laughs> your heart, you get more energy in your heart, you get more energy in your brain. So it creates a field and it begins to drive energy mm. to the brain. So now that energy is gonna cause the person to have a different consciousness, a different thought pattern, right? Hmm. And now they're gonna be thinking possibility because in survival, the first three ones are all about survival. Yeah. yeah, It's really not a creative process of creating from mind. It's more about a more primitive humanistic part of us, you know, animal part of us. Yeah. So then there's the thyroid plexus, the pineal gland, the pituitary gland. So we've seen when people create coherence in each one of these energy centers and they do it properly, they know how to change their brain waves. They get into the operating system. They can master convergent and divergent focus. They're no longer living just this way. They've practiced opening their awareness and focus on energy, becoming conscious of it. And as these brains become more coherent and they start producing different signals to hormones and chemicals and into different glands in the body, that's what's being upregulated to make different, different expressions. So you, you can't control that with your conscious mind. Mm. You gotta get beyond your conscious mind and stay conscious in your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do when we slow our brain waves down. But we don't want just mm -hmm. any kind of brain waves. We want coherent right. brain waves. As you become aware of those energy centers, yep. what you're actually doing is you're entraining that center to a harmonic mm -hmm. of that frequency. And these are called mm -hmm. hormones for a reason oh. because you can begin to harmonize them. <laughs> Uh, there's two times the door to the subconscious mind opens up. When you wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. when you go to bed at night, your mm -hmm. brain waves just fluctuate. You go from beta uh, to alpha to theta to delta when you go to sleep at night. Yep. When you wake up, you go delta, theta, alpha, beta. Yeah. So when you wake up a little early, you're kind of in low level alpha or theta. You're between worlds. Perfect time to meditate because you have to work as hard to change your brain waves. You're already kind of there. And so if a person can actually know the formula of how to change their brain waves. Uh, you can do a very healthy, good meditation for 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, the problem with most people is they find so many instrumental benefits from doing it that they're not waking up like, oh God, I gotta meditate. Okay. They're waking up like, I can't wait to do it. But I'm not a big fan of a five minute meditation. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of a 10 minute meditation unless it's just for a moment to stop and get grounded. I think you can go to deeper and deeper levels and when you start making a path, you know, carving a path yeah. down into that subconscious, yep. the important point is like when you're going down that path and all of a sudden there you go, you make the right and you're with your ex and you go, oh. the best thing to do is back up and go down again. Mm -hmm. That's a victory. That's a victory right there. You became conscious. Then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you start thinking about what you have to do at two o'clock in the afternoon. All right, you back up. You start heading down again. That's a victory. Mm -hmm. Most people don't have the patience to do that because it's tedious in the beginning. Now, you keep doing it, <laughs> you carve that path right down the subconscious, the nerve trunk is gonna get bigger. It's gonna produce a bigger road because there's more traffic going on it. Now, the person's able to get there a lot faster and they could have a great meditation in a half an hour because they know how to change their brain waves. Right. Now, I've been doing this a long time and I have sat with myself for hours sometimes you just have to work really hard mm. because you got people, you got meetings, you got to travel, mm. you got contracts, you got all these things, you got family, and you, you sit down to meditate and your brain is just going to the future or the past and I, I don't care if it takes me an hour to get there, I will not get up. I'm wow. just not that type of person until I'm there. I just will not. And yeah. every time I go past that point where I want to stop, you know, that point where you just mm. go, I've had enough, and you just go longer, you step right into the unknown. And listen, you have two choices when you get into that discomfort. If you, if you move into the discomfort, and you run back to the known, 
but you're not conscious that you're doing it. You just throw in a program, just do what you know how to do because it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Now you just return back to familiar territory. And that's a program, people do it. So they, they run some habit, they run some program. The other choice is in that, is in that discomfort to apply the formula.